Puff is one of those people who he'll give you 15 different visions, so you got to bring it and figure out how you manage it and how you put structure behind and, and vision behind the vision, right? <laughs> or put a plan behind the vision. He didn't have that, so I was able to do that. And it really was, you know, what I did with Puff was I took what he did in entertainment and combined it with fashion, and we coined the word fashiontainment. And he understood that. He said, okay, I got that. The other thing I did in simplicity form was that we started Sean John for the guy who has started his first bank account mm -hmm. as opposed to other brands where for the guy that had all his money in his front pocket. There's a difference. It's a big difference. Big difference, right? So when you talk about an aspirational brand, I'm dealing with the, the young man who has his first apartment on his own. He might have his first luxury car. He might have his used BMW, but he knows where he's trying to go to. The other guys, the Rockaway, the FUBU guys, and those kind of brands, it was a guy that had all his money in his front pocket. He didn't see the vision. He didn't see three years, four years, five years down the road. That's and that was, that's what was the difference between us. And we were able to do that. Um, and that was sort of our, I mean, there was, there was other um, uh, strategies behind it, but that was really how we saw things. That was a front-end strategy. That was a front-end strategy. Yeah, yeah. And also, I was able to use Ralph Lauren's blueprint of what Ralph Lauren really does is he makes you believe that that polo shirt that you wear for $79 is different from the one that you can get at Target at $9.99. It's through the marketing lenses, right? And that's what he was able to do. He makes you feel like if you wear Ralph Thorne anything, that you have millions of dollars. And people really think that they have millions of dollars, all kinds of Mercedes, and your wife rides around a horse's butt-ass neck and all that. <laughs> because that's what, he, that's what he instills in you. So I say to myself, but that's great marketing, right? So how do, we, how do I turn that with Puff? And what we did was... I took with Puff what he had in Jennifer at the time and the way Puff partied and the way Jennifer Puff Lopez, yeah, the way Puff partied and the way Puff carried himself, we made that a lifestyle. So Ralph Lyon had this lifestyle. We had a separate lifestyle that was aspirational, that was understandable for our consumer. And that's how we did it. We built it. I want to go back to the beginnings of Sean John, mm -hmm. and you, you just gave us so much food for thought in terms of strategy, mm -hmm. in terms of vision, in terms of being able to put a strategy mm -hmm. behind the vision. Mm -hmm. But when I met you, you were sitting in a cubicle. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for people who are watching this and mm -hmm. those in the studio audience to understand you built Sean John into a... 400, 500 mm -hmm. million dollar business. Yep. But it started with you, mm -hmm. I remember vividly. <laughs> 33rd floor. In a cubicle yep. huh. with no staff. Nothing. At that time. Yep. And I think people have to understand you have to start somewhere. Right. You know, yep. and, and, and you have to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a little while ago you had a home in New York, mm -hmm. home in LA. Right. And you still humbled yourself, hey, right. I have to start mm -hmm. this brand. Right. I have to do the heavy lifting. Right. It's me who's going to be right. mailing out mm -hmm. boxes. It's me who's going to be cutting mm -hmm. swatches. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. Because you have to see the upside of things. And, and, and I didn't need to have it right now. I saw it. I saw the, the, the money that, that would come, but I didn't need to have it right now. So you're right, I was in a cubicle, no bigger than this, and, and Puff used to say we was in the BMG building, and he wasn't really allowed to have that space for me, so anybody came by I would be like, oh, this is just tour merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But what's interesting is that I would come get in the office at 8.30, leave at 6. You know, in the music industry, I'm in the cubicle, Puff's office is like right there. So, you know, at, from 6 o'clock on is when every celebrity and every artist would walk through, and I would leave 30 hats out on the desk, you remember that, right? And they were all colors. It was the one Sean John had black with white, red with yellow, da, da, da. And I would leave him, I would come in in the morning, I'd be like, yo, all the hats are gone. <laughs> and Puff said something very interesting to me. He said, how many are missing? I said like, I don't know, like 10 out of 15. He goes, well, whatever colors people didn't take, let's not make them. <laughs> and I was like, he's got, a, he's got a good point. He's got a good point. So yeah, it was, it was a t-shirt and a hat that started it. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.